right, it's day three, and I have a purchased copy of Microsoft Office 2021, and I'm going to install it. All right, so we got um, the data transferred. We have Microsoft Office installed, and so the next go round, the final finishing touches on this immaculate computer setup. Something you don't see anymore is the old ball mounts. They're all laser or optical based now. What's interesting about this computer here is that it's not a normal home computer, right? So it's a business class computer. It's the type, this computer is the type that engineers use when they're doing engineering drawings and designing bridges, boats, planes, this, uh, this model is a type of computer that they use to do that. And so it's designed to last a very, very, very long time. And the great thing about it is this computer here, despite its age, is still upgradable. Boy, that's interesting. They don't make them like this anymore, where you have the USB pass-through using a USB type B cable. That's a very novel setup they have there. Very custom, very custom. And you have plugins like this at the bottom. Always lay the monitor face down, like so, and then you can more easily work with it. So we've got VJ hookups and we have DVI. Yeah, the first home computer I bought was a Dega. Yeah, these days the best quality computer you can get for home is an Apple computer, but it's not for everybody because it takes a little bit of getting used to compared to a computer that runs Microsoft Windows. Even though we're going to move this computer to another room, it's best practice to sever all the cable connections. I know some people like to take a shortcut and leave the cables plugged in on the back of the computer. But if you end up having those cables slip while you're carrying the computer, you can end up tripping on the cable. Or if that's not the worst thing that happens, you end up jarring the cable in such a way where you've damaged it. And then you got to go buy another cable. You need some rubber bands? Uh, yes, that, that would be very helpful. So, so far so good in getting the cables disconnected and getting everything separated out for the, the relocation of the computers. So we got the Ethernet cable that's going to handle the internet connectivity. So I'm going to leave that right there. I don't like having Ethernet uh, cable ends on the uh, floor. That's usually not a good idea to do that. All right. And we have the cable for the printer. I inspected this yesterday. We got that, got that in place. So this is an extra cable, but I'll bound it up anyway. This is a printer cable in today's usage, but um, looks like uh, it wasn't long enough. All right, 
So we have the DVI cable. DVI is a very interesting um, cable standard uh, display video output standard. It's my fervent opinion and viewpoint that the computer industry cre created DVI in order to avoid the royalty and licensing fees for HDMI. Though that was pretty short-lived because if you look at it, most computers, most computer monitors today, you will have either DisplayPort or HDMI or both. And it's like, you make enough monitors that have HDMI on it, then it's like, what was the whole point of avoiding those uh, royalties in the first place? So I'm going to temporarily relocate these items to another room. So you go to this room next door. Show me the way. The one that said senior and youth? Yeah. Okay, the way. So it's just a storage room? Yeah, for right now. I love this design because it's all metal. It's like lifting weights. You got to be careful when you're pulling this back here because you can open the entire chassis just like that. But a lot of dust accumulation. That's why once a month you should open these up and spray and uh, dust them out, air, air dust them out, because you'll end up with enough dust accumulation that static electricity will accumulate on the dust particles and can cause damage to the machine. So this has a mechanical hard drive that if you were to upgrade this to a so it's a 500 gigabyte. So you upgrade it to a 512 gigabyte SSD. You can get those for about $100 these days. And that will speed up this computer. I don't have an air duster, so I'm just kind of doing a little gentle blow there. But if you put a 500 gigabyte SSD in here, it'll actually speed this computer up and extend its life by a couple of years in terms of how relevant it is to, the, to today's software environment. And you know, that, that is a upgrade that many people um, tend to, um, now, although the panel comes out easy, you gotta take your time getting it back on because it's designed to be secured in a certain way. When you hear that click, so it's just not going to click to just be clicking when you have it down here uh, sealed properly. And that means you have it uh, fully in place. Now this model is definitely lighter weight. table here have easier access to the ports. So go ahead and plug in the Ethernet port. So make the process much easier. Try not to do things the hard way if you can avoid it. Do it the smart way. Now the USB cable to the printer won't reach this far, which is fine. I'm going to uh, plug in these speakers. I mean, sometimes it gets confusing. Where does the speaker plug in? Where does it plug in? So 30 years ago, they didn't have them color coded, and so it was a little confusing. But over, the, over time, they got a little smart, and they said, hey, let's just make it easy. Leave those on the table, because the wiring is long enough that you don't have to worry about it.
many computer monitors these days do not use the uh, three prong uh, entry point. They use um, a power brick that's more like a laptop, laptop power supply. And I don't think that's a good choice. I think this particular way of doing it is a better way of going about it because these cables are interchangeable. I hear from people all the time that says, oh, I, somehow I lost my computer monitor uh, cable. And of course, I'm thinking, how can that be? But sometimes people move, they change houses or whatever, and their cable gets lost and they need a new cable. And trying to find a replacement that's not like uh, this type of cable is almost impossible. So, you, if that happens to you, you have to contact the manufacturer and they will get you a new cable. So, should you go with DisplayPort or should you go with HDMI? My advice is to go with DisplayPort when at all possible. Uh, DisplayPort is going to be better than HDMI. Um, if you can if you can get support for uh, the newer versions of DisplayPort, you're going to get better quality and better frame rates in your monitor than you will do with HDMI. All right. Okay. And setting up your speakers, make sure you put the simple side furthest away and the more complicated, more, more cable dense side closer to you, if at all possible. Now, in this setup, these uh, speakers were on the floor. I'm just going to go ahead and reestablish them on the table. And then, you know, if, they, if it becomes an issue, and there are other places they can be put. All right. Okay. So this is a wireless keyboard, and it will need to be recharged as all wireless keyboards uh, require, right? And so this cable here is going to be the cable to recharge this keyboard with. So I'm going to put this right here. And this is the power cord for the computer itself. Always plug in the computer power cord last. That's the very last thing you do when you are migrating the computer to a new location. That's a power check. The computer is not actually coming on. So now let's put on the Sounds like the speakers are defective, and that's why they were on the floor. Yeah, the speakers don't work anymore. So, let's see. So I'm gonna detach those. So in order to get proper sound, a new set of speakers will be required. Oh, okay. These speakers have been in use for so long that their sound drivers have gone out, which is not unheard of. The more you use something, the more it wears down. And then also to, uh, when they hit that, uh, Power surge back here one time in May. More than likely. I'm gonna put these in. <clears throat> the icon for network connectivity is active. So let's test it out, make sure we can access websites 
appropriately. Very good. So the internet is active. Let's do a quick check for updates. I tried to download an update earlier and it was unsuccessful. There we go. Wired internet is definitely superior to wireless internet, even in the year 2023. So now that this is hardwired into the internet, it's going to perform much better. And since we are here with the, with the printer connected, I've already installed the printer software. Now we can finish that up and get the printer configuration in place. And even though I installed the printer software yesterday, there were some new updates that came out in the last 24 hours. So it was actually good that the printer wasn't set up yesterday. Um, it needed to be set up today in order to get the most up-to-date information. So it has detected a USB connection. All right. All right, so we're reinstalling the drivers. All right. So the cable connection has been detected. Let's do a test print. my long experience I don't trust the test prints it's something you should always do but you need to recycle the computer reboot it and then go back in and do a couple more tests because printer connections have been known to drop the website for this for this printer manufacturer uh, it doesn't work so it, it offered to take you right to the page for it so that's okay those kind of things are to be expected. So let's move on. I'm going to re reset the computer, reboot it, come back in and do another print. Let's make sure everything has been seated into the registry and into the operating environment. If you're ever installing a printer, and this is a big issue for a lot of people. It's probably one of the top things I hear about on a weekly or monthly basis. My printer don't work. My printer is all messed up. My printer this, my printer that. And realize that the software that you download to install a printer, um, you don't have to actually use that software if that software is causing you problems. You can do a printer setup manually. It is unglamorous and it is inconvenient, but there's always a way to connect the printer and it's not always the official, official way. I went the official way because you should try that first. That's how you get the best support for your printer. Feel free to fall back to a manual setup. I think we're in good shape here. Let me get rid of that. Okay. All right. Last thing I'm going to do here is change the password to match the old computer so that. Be pretty straightforward to log in.
It's all in place. Okay. Right here? Yeah. 